Hey everybody, so today we're going to be installing the GTX 1660 Super. If you checked out our last video, we actually did a little unboxing and we talked about it just a little bit. So the first thing you want to do, make sure you unplug everything, make sure it's all good. So some panels might be a little bit different, but here we have a Cooler Master case and it comes with a tempered glass. So some other panels might be a little bit different. But all you need to do is just remove the two top screws. Now again, every case is a little bit different. Some just have it at the very top and the bottom of the panel. Some could be a little bit on the side. And all you need to do is take the two off and just pop off the rest. Or some might actually have a little handle where you can just pull and that's all you have to do. But in this one, we actually do have the glass from the two up here. And some other ones have it from the bottom as well. So let's remove the glass. So you want to make sure you take off the plastic of your GPU. So you don't want to leave any wrappers on. And there's a little bit of a slip up at the top. And another important one is there's also one that covers the cartridge as well. Just take that off. Sometimes there could be stuff on the back panel, but we don't have it on ours. So most of the time you want to make sure you plug in your graphics card on the top. That's usually the highest bandwidth spot. But just check your motherboard manual just to make sure. So now we want to make sure we re remove the screws at the top. Just slide it in. And just clamp it. You can hear the little clamp. Make sure the clamp is actually in the up position. And you want to make sure it's being secured. I'm going to move the Elgato card here because it's in the way and it could be blocking the fans and we don't want that to be so close to each other so we can get some more air in especially for the GPU, the GPU gets very hot and needs to be ventilated so let's make sure we move that slot a little bit down so we give it some space now you take your cord from your power supply, it's the PCIe one and you're going to see it, it's going to have a 6 pin and then a 2 pin or it could just have an 8 pin all together but either way you want to make sure you do you take that cable and you want to make sure you put the two pin goes in first so then it slides in together with the six pin. Then you're going to have that little cable sometimes stick out but that's okay maybe you can just tie it together or put it to the side. So now you want to make sure we test it so let's put in our display cable or you can put in your HDMI whichever one you have and then let's plug in the power cable as well. Alright so let's turn it on. All right, we see the LEDs, the GPU fan spinning, and we have a display. Looks like it's pretty good. All right, so now we're going to show you how to install the graphics driver. All right, guys, so you want to make sure you install the right driver, and all you have to do is go to NVIDIA's website. Um, I wouldn't recommend going to the Windows 10 updates or anything looking for driver. If you want to get the latest and greatest, you want to go to NVIDIA's website. So you can just Google NVIDIA driver. It's usually the best way to find it. And click the download drivers, and then you go to the product type. You just go GeForce, and then you just have the one card you have. If you have another card, of course, you go to that exact card. Um, it doesn't matter what manufacturer makes it, if it's EVGA or anything. All that matters is that it's uh, the 16 series. And now you have a drop-down list of which version you have. So we have the 1660 Super. And then you go Windows 10 64. If you have that, if you have, of course, 32 or Windows 7, you go to those. Um, and the driver type you want to go to standard, um, they will tell you when you install if you need a DCH. I've seen that with other, other drivers, but um, most of the time, most of the cards are going to be a standard driver. And now you want the game ready driver. Um, they have a studio one more for creators, but most people are going to be using the game ready driver. Even if you're not playing games, it's always the best, most optimized driver. So then you just hit search, and it's going to give you the latest one. You can see it's a pretty big file. It's about half, a little over half a gig, so then we just hit download. All right, now it's just going to check your compatibility. And it's usually for those two sets of drivers, you see the standard driver or DCH, it'll let you know. Or if you download the wrong driver, it'll tell you that it's the wrong driver for this one. All right, so you, now you have two options between the two drivers you want. So you can do just a regular NVIDIA graphics driver, and then you can also include the GeForce Experience. The GeForce Experience, it does come with like a login. It has a little store and everything. Um, it also includes something called Shadow Play which helps you record video play from your games and other things. Um, it's also really useful if you actually get a free game that comes with your graphics card. You can actually, you actually have to log in to the GeForce Experience and you have to register through there and then they give you a game. So 
that's most of the time if you're getting a graphics card that comes with games you're gonna have to log in so in this case and in most people's cases I would just say just install the regular video graphics driver and I would always do hit custom don't hit express because they do install other things so you want to hit custom and you always want to perform a clean installation because usually Windows does automatically install some type of driver and um, sometimes if you're connected to the internet it will detect it and install maybe an older driver so clean installation wipes everything from the previous ones um, sometimes you don't have to really restart either and you can see it does include other software and it'll still even ask you about the GeForce experience um, the PhysX GeForce software we don't really need that anymore I mean it's it's some game support but you really don't need it I would recommend it's it's a big hit on performance everything I would never really put it on there so I wouldn't install that um, the HD driver you can install the graphics driver is the main one uh, the USB-C driver if you're going to use that so I would definitely do that so if I would just do any of them do the HD audio driver the graphics driver and the USB-C driver all right guys so everything did install well so let's go check it out if you actually look in the corner here we actually do have an NVIDIA settings which is a control panel for itself and if you click it you can actually do a lot of things here. You can change the resolution, you can change the frame rate. You can kind of test anything here that you want. You can even go lower or higher. If you have multiple monitors, you can also set up the multiple displays. Um, if you do have a G-Sync compatible monitor, you can set that up. Or if you have actual real G-Sync monitor, you can set that up as well. There's a little module that's built into that. Um, you can also play with the colors here. You can go crazy if you want with that you can use Nvidia settings or use your video player settings you can change a lot of that and there's a lot of little things um, if you do the other the GeForce experience it's just going to give you more information and just gonna have a login thing but you still whenever you change into the resolution you still have to go through this control panel so it downloads this anyway and this is just kind of the best one to do all right guys so thanks a lot for watching if you found this video very helpful please leave a comment down below um, what card do you guys think you're going to get soon? Um, are you going to be installing the 1660 Super? Or are you guys thinking about getting maybe the GeForce GTX 1660 Ti? Or is there like another one you guys are going to go for the RTX 2080 Ti? Um, Christmas is coming up soon, so it would be interesting to see what you guys are thinking about getting. There's lots of deals coming out. I would definitely recommend getting the GeForce GTX 1660 Super as at least a minimum if you're going to be playing games or even just doing general things. I think it's a great card just for the minimum spec and the best bang for the buck you can get if you ever decide to play games or if you decide to pretty much do anything with your device. It's it's a great mid-range card, mid-range to low-range card. Most of the video cards don't go on sale a whole lot unless they come with a free game or something. Alright guys, but thanks a lot for watching. Bye.